When it comes to maps in TF2, Halloween maps are an interesting case. On one hand, they can be a lot of fun. There's a lot more leniency in the types of things you can put on a Halloween map without people complaining about balance. Things like pumpkin bombs, magic spells, alternate dimensions, and occasionally even boss fights add a unique atmosphere to a Halloween event maps that normal maps just can't replicate. On the other hand, these things aren't always inherently positive to my gameplay experience. It's very frustrating getting instant killed by a boss while I'm trying to play the game, or one shot by a cross map fireball when I'm standing in a corner minding my own business. So I wanted to do some kind of analysis on the current Halloween event maps that are in the game. However, my brain is degraded to such a point where the only way I can process information is through tier lists, so we're gonna be doing one of those. If you've seen my channel before, you know that I dislike the classic S through F tiering system since it's super arbitrary and doesn't tell you anything about what you're tiering. Here are the tiers I'm using this time around. They're self-explanatory enough to not need an explanation, but I'll give one anyway because I'm just that kind. The Thor tier is a pun that is much funnier in my head because it's like the god tier, but like since maps are made in hammer, it's the Thor tier because Thor wields a hammer and okay, this joke sucks. This tier is for maps that go above and beyond the Call of Duty and are absolutely incredible for no in particular reason. I'll give individual explanations for why I'm putting the few maps that go here in that tier, but this is the best of the best. Usually a great time is for maps that are simply fun to play. They're not gonna be perfect, but I always look forward to getting these maps in my contracts list because hey, I get to play a few games on these maps. Why not? Mixed Bag contains maps that can be a lot of fun, just depending on the lobby, they may not be. These maps are the two forts of Halloween, where you know the map has its flaws, but for whatever reason, good lobbies are still a lot of fun. All right, but forgettable is for maps that I forgot are in the game because they either don't stand out aesthetically or gameplay-wise. They're not necessarily bad per se, I'm just never really excited to play on them. Only play for contracts is for all of the maps that make you deeply sigh when you see a contract in your contract list forum. They're not good, they're not fun, but they're just playable enough to make it worth it to suffer through them to get a pumpkin. And suffering, uh, well, we'll get to those when we get to those. I also want to mention a few things before we start. First of all, this entire tier list is my personal opinion based on the experience I have had on each map. Fun is subjective, and while I will bring up some empirical points of why I think a map works or doesn't, the classes you play or the lobbies you get into may drastically affect your enjoyment of a map one way or another. You are allowed to disagree, and that is the beautiful part of opinions, although if you're willing to comment why, I would love to know why you disagree. Second, each tier is going to be ordered, so maps on the left of a tier are going to be considered better than the maps on the right. Uh, there aren't that many, so I don't foresee this becoming too complicated, and I think it's worth noting which maps are better than another. Similarly, due to the weirdness of my sorting system, I personally consider mixed bag and all right but forgettable equal in quality, since they're opposite sides of the same coin. One obviously had to go above the other in a literal vertical tiering system, but it's hard to say whether boring maps are better or worse than maps that are sometimes great but sometimes suck. Alrighty, let's actually do the tier list now. I'll go through maps in the order that they were added, starting with Harvest Event, and we'll end with this year's new maps. Harvest Event is a map that a lot of people have played on probably at least one point or another because, like I mentioned earlier, it is the oldest Halloween map in the entire game. And for starting out not having much of an idea of what was going on, I think they did a pretty good job with Harvest Event. The only things on there that you need to be concerned about that are like actual map hazards, other than the sniper sight lines that are present on both versions of Harvest, are the pumpkin bombs, which actually can lead into a lot of interesting plays, and the ghosts, which... <laughs> Okay, the ghosts just kind of suck. Uh, ghosts, skeletons, and uh, a couple other like random things that people add always bring a map down no matter what. In the case of Harvest, I don't think they bring the map down too much though. Uh, really the only thing they prevent you from doing is standing in a couple of the uh, more commonly patrolled sniper sight lines. Uh, although if you're not a sniper and you're just running through there, it is very frustrating to get stunned by a ghost and just killed by whatever random thing might be shooting at you. Harvest itself is a pretty polarizing map. Uh, some people really Really, really like it and think it's the best thing ever added. Uh, some people hate it because the sniper sight lines are awful, and I mean they kind of are, but I personally really like Harvest. I think it works really well as a deathmatch map, and uh, because there's an objective you can do too, I mean it's like you can have a lot of flexibility in what you're actually doing. So for that reason, Harvest Event is going in usually a great time. Uh, I really never mind queuing up for this. It's one of the first contracts you actually end up doing most of the time too, because it's the first one on the official maps list. Uh, I think they did a really good job for, uh, again, just not really having any idea of what a Halloween map was supposed to be. It can be very easy to go one way or another, either adding way too much stuff or not enough, but uh, the pumpkin bomb placements are well thought out. I mean, you can pretty easily 
get some kills with those, but it's also not impossible to avoid them if you know where they are. Um, generally, I think this map is interesting enough, although I still do prefer to play the, uh, the normal harvest for what it's worth. Man Manor, just for whatever reason, goes hard. I have no idea why they decided to make this as beautiful as it is. It's one of the best-looking official Valve maps that they've ever added. It's based on Mountain Lab, which isn't, like, a great map on its own. It's pretty good. I never really mind playing on Mountain Lab, but uh, Man Manor also does a couple changes that make it uh, kind of interesting. The main thing that I think goes in disfavor of Man Manor versus Mountain Lab is the Horseman. Uh, the Horseman is kind of interesting when he's on the first point because it's mostly chaos anyway, so it's like, there's a lot of room to run around to avoid him if, you, uh, if you're it. When you get to the second point though, the Horseman either completely ruins defenses or completely ruins offensive pushes if you get unlucky. I'm not a huge fan that the Horseman spawns twice, uh, I kinda wish once you beat him on the first point he was gone. At the same time, though, Man Manor, in my opinion, is one of the best uh, Halloween maps that's ever been added to the game. And especially for it being the second one, I think they did a great job with it. Um, there's a lot of strategy in what you can implement. Um, sentries and snipers can get kind of annoying, but at the same time, there is enough counterplay that you have. Um, the only choke point really is like uh, going from the first point to the second point because you don't have any other way to get there than just running in an open space. But really, if you can organize a decent push, I think this map is absolutely amazing and uh, defending and attacking the third point both are uh, super fun. When you combine this with like all of the aesthetic changes they did to Mountain Lab, I think this ends up just being amazing. I'm gonna put it in the Thor tier. It's one of the few that's going to go in there. Maybe I shouldn't waste this tier on Man Manor of all things, but personally, from all the games that I've played, I really, really like this map. Iaduct is okay, all things considered. Ever since they added the truce system, it's a little bit annoying when the boss spawns. Uh, Monoculus does just kind of obliterate you instantaneously. Not to mention engineers who are attempting to be incredibly funny build sentry nests in random spots, and that can also get annoying. Viaduct isn't like the best map ever. It's not bad by any means. I just, I'm not a huge fan of like Viaduct as it is. So when you combine that with the fact that there's like other chaos going on, it's up in the air. Sometimes I play uh, Iaduct and it's really fun. Sometimes I play it and it's just like a complete and total wipe or just Monoculus spawn so much that I never end up having fun. But I think Iaduct itself is like, it can be good in the best occasions. Uh, I think that deserves it a spot in the mixed bag tier. I think that's pretty much uh, by definition what that's for. Iaduct is one that I'm usually just like ready to get over with the contracts though. Ghost Fort really makes me wonder if they knew what they were doing when they designed Halloween maps. Okay, so like, I understand the desire to have a boss that spawns every once in a while that gets more powerful when you beat him. That's a cool mechanic on paper. I say on paper because there's absolutely no reason that the point timer should be seven minutes. I don't even think, I don't remember if Lakeside has seven minute point timers, but no, if, if you're going to have a boss spawn that prevents you from killing each other and capping the point every 30 to 60 seconds, there is no reason why the match itself, the timer, needs to be 7 minutes. It, it literally, games on Ghost Fort that I've played, pretty much it's guaranteed that they're going to be over half an hour per round. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, if the map itself was any worse, I think I would absolutely despise Ghost Fort. But it's playable enough. This is gonna go and only play for contracts. Uh, it really, again, th the nice thing about the rounds being really long is if you're pretty good at the game, it's not hard to get your entire contract done in a single round. But there have been times where I end rounds on like 95 out of 100 complete, and then I have to spend another half an hour of my life just getting the like five contract points done. And you have to do this twice the, the, because there's a Marasmus, a defeat Marasmus contract you have to play on Ghost Fort twice, so uh, this is like, it, it kind of gets old really quick. It gets old after one round, and there's a real possibility that you're going to have to play three to get all your contracts done, so I just, I don't like this map very much. I don't think it's super good. Hell Tower is basically in the same boat as Harvest Event, where it can be really, really good if you already like High Tower. There are two things on Hell Tower that I think make it worse than High Tower, and two things that make it better. Number one, uh, skeletons just freaking suck. Uh, any any map that employs skeletons just ruins the entire map. Skeletons are the worst thing that has ever been added to Team Fortress 2. I'm not exaggerating, I'm not pulling a freaking like zesty Jesus here. 
skeletons really are one of the worst things in the game. They're just annoying. They don't serve any purpose outside of just causing random chaos. But it's not even like the horseman where it's like obvious where he is and you need to run away from him. Because skeletons are just kind of everywhere. Even the little guys just like swarm you and kill you quickly. Because skeletons can spawn every so often on Hell Tower, I think that kind of ruins it. Although, usually the skeleton AI doesn't make them go like up the stairs onto the next level. So, uh, really, you only have to worry about skeletons on like half the map, which isn't too bad, especially considering how small Hell Tower is. The second downside to Hell Tower is less of an actual problem with the map and more with the people who play it. But uh, it's generally considered on any high tower casual server that if you capped, you're quite literally Satan, which I guess works on Hell Tower because you, like, get to go to hell. Um, but the problem with Hell Tower is that you need to get contracts done. <laughs> People will sit there and try not to make you cap, which, like... Everyone has the same contract, so at least people are slightly more willing to cap uh, than, I guess, on High Tower. But I, I've still played several years in a row where I've just never been able to actually get the contract done because people won't finish the match and let me turn it in. Hell Tower itself, though, I really like High Tower. I think it's a uh, fantastic map just for random DMing. It's not balanced, like if you're actually considering the objective, but. I have quite a few hours on higher tower, high tower, no carts. I mean, I, I've had my rounds with this map, and I think Hell Tower handles it pretty well. Spell books add a whole nother layer of depth to uh, Hell Tower. I think uh, the spell books really make this what it is. And I mean, this, this is the map where they debuted, so it makes sense that they would uh, really go the extra mile to make it so you can use these well. But um, spell books in general, I think, are pretty underutilized. And uh, if you give people an open enough space to run around in and don't like try to cram people in corridors, spells are amazing. Spells are a lot of fun to be able to uh, have like some extra utility on a class. And this is the only uh, the map that has the freaking teleport spell shadow leap so that's also a uh, point for this because that allows for some pretty cheesy plays as like uh, demo knight or pyro or whatever i'm gonna put this in usually a great time uh personally i think i have more fun with hell tower than harvest so i'll put it above it but hell tower in general i mean it's basically just high tower with the bonus of spells and the detriment of skeletons i think it's pretty comparable and this is the map that i usually spend the most time on outside of contracts every year Carnival of Carnage is kind of a weird case because Doomsday is not a very well-designed map. Usually what happens on Carnival of Carnage and maybe like half the lobbies I'm in is that people will cap in the first like probably one minute of the game because you can literally you can finish the entire game in like less than a minute and it's not that hard to do if uh, both teams aren't trying like super hard. It was cool in theory that they allowed people to uh, be able to like take something from point A to point B and cap with it essentially. The problem is, again, that the distance that you have to run from the ticket pickup area to the strongman is not that far. You can like get out of spawn when the round starts, get the tickets, and get all the way to the strongman and cap in about a minute and a half, and uh, you're, you're spending more time with that than uh, bumper cars. Bumper cars itself, I think it was a really fun mechanic. I think two out of the three games are really fun. One of them is just kind of boring. The falling platforms in the looting gallery, just because it's more of a free-for-all, I think are, uh, are the stronger bumper car games, and those are the ones that I usually look forward to playing. The, the looting gallery especially, because you can just, like, kill people randomly, and, like, if, if you don't go for ducks and you go for kills, that, that makes the bumper cars a lot of fun. The soccer one... It's just kind of whatever. The, the ball is unresponsive half the time, and it's just like, you barely feel like you're doing anything, and it's like, you can't even go for kills, because like, I guess there is more of an expectation of uh, you doing things, and the map is so big, it's hard to get them, so. Um, generally, I think Carnival of Carnage is alright. Usually what I'll do on this is I'll go and abuse the, like, dance things and spam meteor showers at the, uh, the place where people are about to dance. Scummy, yes. Uh, contract efficient very much. I get like most of my contracts done on like one or two rounds of this because of that. I'll put this in mixed bag. Uh, if people aren't capping and they're actually playing like a death match, this can be a lot of fun. I mean, uh, Carnival of Carnage does offer quite a bit of deathmatch potential, I guess just because of the map, uh, just because of how it's laid out. So um, that's fun. There are spells which uh, kind of add to it. I don't think you're too cramped anywhere. So um, if you get the right lobbies, this is definitely one of my favorite maps. The problem is, again, you, you have the lobbies too where people are just like trying to speed run the cap. So that's that's the uh, those are the problems that I run into. I like this more than Iaduck though. I'll put it above it. So that is all of the 
official Valve ones. Now we're on to the infinite number of community maps. Gorge is just kind of whatever. I kind of forget that Gorge exists half the time. It basically looks like a bootleg Man Manor. Like, Man Manor put so much effort into making everything, like, thematically consistent. Gorge is, like, the same thing, except they just rearrange the assets, but it looks worse because there's, like, just skeletons everywhere the skeletons make it really hard to play um the gorge itself is not a very well designed map it's really easy to uh, defend last with sentries only i don't hate this map by any means but i'm usually kind of bored whenever i'm playing this just because like all of the community maps i guess i should bring this up right now too all of these community maps all have exactly the same contracts with the exception of graveyard because you can't get um freaking crit pumpkin kills but all of the community maps have the objectives of kill people with pumpkin bombs and pick up a crit pumpkin all of the uh, the other ones have unique objectives which um, allow you to potentially get things done a lot faster oh no wait, what am i saying some of them have the uh pickups replaced with deposit all the player destruction ones you get points for depositing but uh yeah these these all kind of blend together which makes certain maps hard to uh, complete the contract for and especially if i don't like the map that much not being able to do the contract super fast is kind of annoying. Um, I'll put Gorge. I think it's alright, but it's pretty forgettable. Uh, this isn't one of the maps that I really think of when I think of Halloween maps. It's just kind of like, like, really, even the name, Gorge Event, just kind of summarizes exactly what it is. It's just like the a spooky version of a normal map. There's not a ton that's changed other than there's skeletons and pumpkin bombs, and then some of the, like, random things have been replaced with bottomless pits. Other than that... It's just kind of an existing map that I will play on, but I'm not excited to. Hellstone is one of the first of the five maps that I'm calling the ICS maps. What I mean by an ICS map is there are five Halloween maps that are currently in the game that are made by a guy by the name of ICS. Now, ICS himself is a pretty cool guy. I've seen uh, some of the things that he's kind of like said or commented on in like various forums or Twitter or whatever. He seems like a pretty good guy and uh, he just kind of makes maps as a hobby. So you know what? All the better to you. I just wish he didn't because, like, all of his maps kind of freaking suck. And it's not even his fault either. It's like, you can make the weirdest map ever, and ultimately it's up to Valve to say, no, I, we're not adding this to the game. But they add one of his maps every year. So I, I think recently he's kind of, like, just made maps as bad as possible because he knows Valve will add them. But um, especially his earlier ones, I think he was just having fun. So I'm not going to blame him too much. No, no toxicity intended toward the guy. But goodness gracious, buddy, please learn how to make a map. Hellstone is easily one of the worst maps that I have ever seen. Now, in case you didn't know the difference, uh, or even if there was a difference between Hellstone and Brimstone and Gravestone, yes, they are three different maps. They're not very creatively named. Hellstone is the one where when you get toward the last point when you're capping the payload, two monoculuses spawn and try to kill you at the same time. This literally has every possible map hazard. There, there's not a single thing that you could have added that doesn't exist on this map, except for Marasmus, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the Horseless Headless Horseman spawns, two Marasmuses spawn, skeletons are everywhere, there are spells, there's like death pits you can get sent to hell. It's just, it's pain. I don't know why the guy felt that like every single thing needed to be crammed into a map, but this is probably... Okay, this was previously, before this year, this was my least favorite map in the game. This is easily one of the hardest to get contracts on. Um, I never feel like I'm even doing anything on this map because the map kills me more than other players. It's like, how am I supposed to improve when I run out of ammo trying to kill the, like, infinite amount of skeletons chasing me? There's nothing you can even do. It's not, I, I don't feel like I'm playing the game. I feel like I'm battling the map. This is easily one of the least playable maps in the entirety of TF2, only beaten out by Whatville and another one that I'll put. Uh, it's, it'll, it'll come later on, don't worry, but this is going in suffering. I absolutely despise this map with every fiber of my being. Um, I think just because it was one of the first ICS maps that he made, he had no idea like how much was too much, although it doesn't it doesn't really take like a, a map genius to know like, oh, maybe two Monoculus is shooting the attackers makes this hard to play. I don't know. Again, no toxicity toward ICS. This is the worst thing I've ever seen, though. Moonshine, uh, or as I've heard it described, uh, Spell Playground is basically an alternative version of Hell Tower without as much verticality. 
Um, it's all right. I, I, I think Moonshine, if you get into the right lobby, can be a whole lot of fun. Uh, the, the main problems that I run into are snipers. I think snipers are probably one of the worst, uh, worst defenders, but... Uh, Moonshine itself, ever since they updated the point to not revert capture when you get sent to hell, uh, because if you don't know, every time you cap the point in Moonshine, uh, basically the Merasmus Wheel of Fortune spins, and if you roll the dance one, everyone gets teleported to hell. It used to uncap the point, it doesn't do that anymore, meaning the rounds aren't unnecessarily long if you just get unlucky. Um, but Moonshine itself, I mean, if you don't have any quote-unquote degenerate play styles on the server, I think this can be a lot of fun just to run around and, like, throw fireballs at people. It's, it's just kind of like a, a very primitive freaking enjoyment, but it can be a lot of fun. On the flip side, it's maybe a 50-50 per lobby whether or not you're going to have fun on Moonshine. Uh, really, it, it ranges anywhere between usually a great time and suffering. Um, I think, in reality, it's like, it's usually at least playable for the contract. I'll put it in mixed bang because I think uh, at the very least there can be some enjoyment that's derived out of this. It's just not always. I've not had fun enough times playing it for me to not be overly excited when I play it in the future because I know it's going to be a gamble. So um, it's worth a try at least. I just, I'm not a, the biggest fan of this one anymore. Sunshine is an interesting case uh, because this is the Halloween version of Sunshine, which is actually one of, I, I think it's generally considered like in the top 10 maps of TF2. I know it's used in most competitive map rotations, which is nice and all. I think Sunshine works really, really well as a competitive map for 6v6 when teamwork is actually a thing. The problem with Sunshine is I just don't think, uh, similar to Upward, I, I don't think Sunshine works in a 12v12 setting where teamwork isn't a thing. I think it can become particularly frustrating to cap last on Sunshine. Um, Sunshine is pretty much the same thing as Sunshine, except, like, certain things are replaced with bottomless pits and there are pumpkins and yada yada yada. Sunshine, I don't know, especially when you're trying to push last, this just becomes really annoying. Um, ultimately, though... Sunshine just doesn't stand out to me. It doesn't have a super unique aesthetic. Uh, it doesn't have a super unique layout either, especially like in 12v12 if you're not used to competitive gameplay. Um, it just kind of blends in with everything else. Uh, I, usually I would rather play on Sunshine. I only really do this for the contracts, but um, there have been several times where I come back and I'm like, oh yeah, Sunshine has a Halloween version, uh, which inevitably is what ended up getting Sunshine added, ironically, but... Um, it kind of kind of outdated itself there in a sense. I'll put this in all right, but forgettable. I think most games that I play are pretty the same. Um, I, I really only play this when I'm doing the contracts, but yeah, it's just it's just kind of just kind of whatever. I will at least put this above Gorge because this has exactly zero skeletons on the map, so that's that's something nice. But overall, it's just kind of a camp fest when you get to last, which is what bothers me about it. Brimstone ICS map number two uh, did improve on the mistakes of the previous one. I think Brimstone is significantly more playable than Hellstone. Uh, the problem is it still just is kind of annoying. Uh, the map layout itself, I think, is probably worse than Hellstone. There just aren't as many things assaulting you at every split second that I think you can actually, like, manage to get out of spawn on most lives. Brimstone itself, I mean, is pretty sensible with everything that's been laid out, but there's still a lot of things to watch out for. I mean, the map layout's super choky. It's kind of hard to get, like, really, once you get past the second point, doing anything as an attacker is going to be a miracle. You can you can probably push up into, like, the room with the point uh, right before last, but last is, like, really hard to capture if the teams are about even. Merasmus occasionally just summons random things like bosses or, like, uh, spells like Minify on everybody or crits or whatever. Certain spells just completely derail the entire game, and it's like... Uh, if that feature wasn't there, I'd probably be a little bit more forgiving, but there have been a lot of times where I was playing Brimstone, and uh, just our team got completely screwed over because, like, the other team rolled crits as we were pushing in on attack, and we just all died and, like, lost a bunch of Ubers and everything. I know, like, not every map is supposed to be, like, this super try-hard thing, but remember, the better you do, the faster you complete your contract, and I, I just, I already don't like this map, so... Um, I'll put this one on only play for contracts. It is, at the bare minimum, playable, which isn't something I can really say about Hellstone, but it's just, this is one of the ones that I kind of dread when I get to it in the contracts every year. Maple Ridge is the definition of 
Yep, it sure is a map. Like, it's, there isn't really anything special going on. The layout's kind of unique. I mean, I like the uh, the point being, like, elevated with a moat around it. I think that's something that's not done super often. The problem is just, like, everything else that isn't literally the center point is the most generic thing ever. <laughs> there isn't, like, anything else interesting going on on the map. It's actually pretty easy to, like, get in the back lines really far in spawn camp just because it's kind of a labyrinth behind spawn. But it's, like, a labyrinth with huge open sections, which... <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a lot of choke point in this going on, and I just... I, I can't necessarily get behind this one. Uh, I think, on the other hand, though, it's not bad. I, there, I've had a lot of fun, like, especially if you try to play near mid and the lobbies are fine... Uh, then yeah, this is a, an okay map. It's just one that I'm never really like Looking forward to going into I think this really could go in either mixed bag and all right But forgettable but this is one that usually blends into the rest of the background Halloween maps It doesn't do anything super interesting aesthetically. It's just kind of like harvest color palette and that's about it uh, I'll go ahead and put this in all right, but forgettable I think this is one of the uh, the more basic Halloween maps that we have Pit of Death is one of the best maps I think that uh, Team Fortress 2 has added. I wouldn't quite say it's God tier. I guess Thor's here in this case, though, because Pit of Death does have its flaws. A uh, good engineer, soldier, demo, whatever, can pretty much shut down mid. Um, I think the, uh, the whoever made the general layout of the map did a really good job because there are quite a bit of flank routes and uh, general things that you can do to uh, kind of take people off guard and upset camping. Um, but it is pretty easy for one team to just have complete control of mid and uh, to make the uh, the map kind of unbalanced. Outside of that, though, Pit of Death is one of my favorite ones. This is another one, kind of like Hell Tower. I just spend a lot of time on this map, not even doing contracts, just because it's fun to play. Uh, it's one of the uh, the more fun ones that they've added. And because it's player destruction, you only occasionally have to actually do an objective. Just running around and killing people is doing an objective, so... I quite like this one. Um, unlike some of the other player destruction maps, or I guess unlike another one, uh, they did a really good job of actually making sure that the health and ammo and metal regen that you get for being the team leader is sensible, so it's not like it's more beneficial to you just to sit there and never cap. Uh, I'll put this in usually a great time. I'll put it right at the top. Uh, like I said, there are just enough flaws preventing this from being Thor tier, but this is really one of my favorite maps. I think it's within like the top five for sure. For the longest time, Cauldron was another one like Maple Ridge where I was like, okay, yeah, it's kind of interesting. The fact that there's like a thing in the center of the hill is like cool, I guess. Uh, but the more I've played of it, especially this year, I've started to realize that Cauldron, I, I kind of remember why I just have like this negative emotional aura about it. It's because of the skeletons. There's a lot of them. And not just the skeletons either. It's uh, the thing that happens. It's either whenever you cap a point or it's like on a timer, but um, every once in a while, something will happen that's like a random Erasmus event where uh, everyone will either be like marked for death or a lid on fire or skeletons will spawn or Ubered or Critzed or whatever. There, there's a couple of them. Skeletons though, whenever the skeletons happen, the map is quite literally unplayable for however long they exist for because there are so many of them, like literally like three times as many skeletons on this map than there is on like something like Hell Tower. They run around everywhere. They actually have good pathing, so they, they will chase you all across the map. Um, there's enough of them and the map gets a little bit choky near mid um, to where if skeletons are chasing you, oftentimes if you don't have good vertical mobility and can't just like rocket jump away, there's literally nothing you can do except just getting consumed by the horde. Um, literally the skeletons on this map are such a problem that like it shuts down the entire thing while they're active. The map itself outside of that isn't amazing. I'll probably, this is like I'll put this in only play for contracts. It's one of the better ones in this tier. It's not like super frustrating. It doesn't have like stupid mechanics all the time like Ghost Fort or Brimstone does. But um, the annoying parts really, really, really get on my nerves. So I just, I, I don't like playing on this one that much, I've realized. Cursed Cove is an instance of what you should do if you design a Team Fortress 2 map. Almost word for word. 
this has not only a very nice visual look with a bunch of custom assets and textures, the map layout is really, really nice because there's like some cramped areas, but it's like kind of interspersed with large areas, so you can kind of pick the battleground you're on. It's a player destruction game mode, so being able to pick your battles actually matters now because, uh, the large thing that you actually have to, like, go to every once in a while to deposit goes across the map, so you're not, like, forced into a uh, single area that can be camped pretty easily. I think Curse Cove in general not only is one of the best player destruction maps in TF2, not only is one of the best Halloween maps in TF2, but is probably in the top 10 maps and the entirety of Team Fortress 2. This is one of the few of Halloween that I really wish was here all year around. Um, it really, I, I can see where some people that like main class is like heavy, for instance, may not like this map as much, but I think you can get good gameplay out of every single class in this, which isn't something you can say much. Scouts, soldiers, and potentially demo men will have a really good time just running around. Same with pyros, I guess. Uh, heavies do have a little bit of a problem in the open areas, but I mean, heavy is a poorly designed class anyway, which is a video for another day, but um, you, you can still, there, there are strategies that you can do as heavy. Engineers, you have enough cheesy areas to set up on to, uh, to get some occasional kills, but it's not like overwhelming that you can just shut down entire portions of the map. Sniper sight lines are equally as sensible where there are some pretty good ones, but not ones that are so crazy that it just breaks everything. And Spy, because of like how weirdly vertical the map is at times, Spy is a lot of fun to just run around the tricks tab on. This map does everything so incredibly well, not only aesthetically, but gameplay wise. Like this guy thought of everything so much so that I figured out the guy who made this map put it in his portfolio for future job offers, which I think is really, really cool that you could be so proud of something that, I mean, turned out so amazingly that you can do that. This is going right to the top of Thor. I think this really is the best Halloween map in TF2. I've seen some hate for this map by people who I had to guess probably aren't super good at the game. I don't want to like get into the uh, the habit of saying like, oh, well, if you dislike the things I like, you suck. But really, I think like if you are good enough at this game to understand mobility, you're going to have a blast on this map. It's just it's so fun to run around on. I can't stress that enough. We've kind of jumped the shark with Curse Cove, but uh, we can definitely take a look at everything else. There's still some gold buried around the uh, the trash here. Uh, Gravestone is probably the most playable map that ICS has ever made. Now, it's not great, there's still some problems with it that make me not want to play it super often, but the map itself is actually pretty good. The first point isn't amazing, I mean, it's pretty basic, but, um, there, there are some interesting areas that they've, uh, they've set up just kind of around the map, especially, like, uh, in the payload room with like the third point where there's the uh, the swinging axes and the saws and everything That's a pretty interesting room because there's just enough flank routes where you can be able to run around and um, I, I don't know it's like there, there's enough stuff that I think if this map was just the map I would actually be pretty fond of this one. I think, again, this is the closest thing and uh, probably the best map that ICS has managed to get into the game so far. The problem with Gravestone is that, um, it's kind of hard to, uh, really take satisfaction in the fact that if you win, you don't actually win because the bumper car minigame at the end is absolute BS. In order to actually win the map, you have to completely get to the end of the bumper car course that everyone is sent to at the end. The only thing that you get for winning the map in the overworld is a, like, less than two second head start in the bumper car game, so there's really no point. It doesn't matter if you lose or not. The only reason to actually care about defending on this map is just to have more time to get points for your contract. So I think that kind of cheapens the entire experience. I know that, like, you're not playing every single map to win, but it's, like, it's still demoralizing to know that, like, wow, you play to the game of your life and your team is, like, so insane, but then just because of the bumper cars you lost. I think just for that, I think that bumps it down to only play for contracts just because I know that that's coming up and it always frustrates me, but I'll put it at the very top of this tier. Um... It's, it's more playable than everything else in here. The map design is actually fairly sensible, and if there was a non-Halloween version of this map in TF2, I probably wouldn't mind it as much, I'll be honest, but uh, just in general, the bumper cars kind of ruin it for me. Monster Bash is a map that looks amazing. This is probably, visually speaking, my favorite map in the entire game. It's just too bad that every time I play this map, I hate it just a little bit more. There really isn't anything positive about the gameplay of Monster Bash. 
at all. Like, seriously, everything is so cramped. It just, it's like nothing ever feels like it's my fault when I die. Um, it's super easy for people to, like, spam around corners and kill you instantaneously. Sentry spots, like for me at least, always feel like if I use them, my sentry breaks instantly, but then, like, other people just get on, like, godlike killstreaks by putting things there. This is a map that, like, I, I, frankly speaking, I don't even know if it's that bad strictly. I just have such a dislike for this one. If it didn't look really cool, this would probably be, like, one of my least favorite maps in the game, but I, it just, it looks so good that I, I can't quite put it in suffering. Like, even the contracts, I just, I never feel like I'm doing well in this map. Other maps, I'll probably go like a uh, 2 or 3 positive KD. This one, I, I never feel like I'm positive. I always feel like uh, I'm just kind of getting wrecked. It's so hard to actually do the objective and deposit your souls too, because the uh, deposit point is in the very center of like every possible sight line, so it's super easy to not only just get sniped or like cross map rocketed or whatever, but just to get like bumped off the point, because if like a pyro air blasts you off, you just, you quite literally just get air blasted into hell. So, I'm gonna put this one at the very bottom of only play for contracts. I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me on this one, but it just, I can't, I don't like this one. I There's been a lot of times that I've played this this year just to make sure my, like, gameplay wasn't being sabotaged by, like, bad moments and I wasn't just, like, misremembering it. Out of the, like, 10 to 15 games that I played on this, though, like, maybe one was alright, but I just, I don't like this one very much, I'm sorry. Slasher is one of the few Halloween maps that has actually received updates over the years. Uh, specifically this year, it was, it was like how it was originally for, like, all of the time up until literally the start of this Halloween update. But the updates that they added uh, do two major things, which were a huge problem on Ghost Fort that they've now fixed and I'm very thankful for. First of all, they've completely removed truces from the boss spawns, which happened very often. Uh, there was a lot of the time in Slasher where you were literally just, like, trying to kill a boss. And it's not even like on um, Ghost Fort where it's the same boss every time. There's a bunch of, like, random different ones that sometimes glitch out with the map. Like, Merasmus, I'm pretty sure, just goes out of bounds. Uh, you, you literally can't even hit him for the first while of him spamming the bomb and Omicron everywhere, so that's fun. But yeah, like, the fact that you had to stop whatever you're doing, especially because the map is pretty big, like, with the, uh, the hell area included, there's a lot of places to, uh, to kind of be. The fact that you had to stop whatever you're doing and then go kill the boss or just try to survive for however long made this very frustrating to play. However, they've removed truces entirely, which means you can do whatever the frick you want. You can just kind of let the boss ravage everybody and it's, like, just kind of wacky. Um, and they've shortened the point timer. Not by a ton, they they took it down from 7 minutes to 6 minutes, which is kind of whatever, but like, usually that extra minute on the timer could be up to like, 5 to 10 minutes of gameplay, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that either, because if the game is in overtime, and a boss would spawn and truce the game, then that, that could literally make the match last for like, a couple more minutes per boss spawn. Slasher has an amazing visual aesthetic. It's like really all of the 2018 ones, Monster Bash, uh, freaking Curse Cove and Slasher all have like really nice looking areas, but uh, Slasher, I'm glad it's at least kind of playable now because it used to be one of my least favorite maps in the game. Uh, I, th I still think it's kind of a like only play for contracts moment, although I I've been playing it more for meme strategies, but in terms of the actual map, it's just like, it's kind of whatever. I, I never really enjoy getting absolutely obliterated by the uh, the bosses, and I think the uh, six-minute point timer still is very frustrating to deal with. So I'll put this in only play for contracts. I think this is like, it's better than all of the other ones except for Gravestone. I think I'd still rather play on Gravestone than Slasher, but uh, these two are like barely in this tier for what it's worth. Laughter, all things considered, is a pretty fun map. Uh, it's pretty small, but really, they just, for whatever reason, it just works. Like, most other maps, I can point and say, like, oh, yeah, no, this is, like, fun because of X, Y, or Z mechanic. Laughter, they just, it's just a fun map. I don't know really how else to describe it. I guess there's, like, just enough flank routes to make it not super choky. Um, they made the center point, like, have a decent amount of ways to, uh, to counter people on it, but it's also, like, relatively easily able to be capped if you know what you're doing. The explosive balloons add a lot to this map. I think kind of like Harvest, they're placed in uh, very thoughtful areas where 
it's pretty easy to just kind of like get a uh, balloon snipe from across the map like purposefully not accidentally and um kill the person that you're aiming for they just a lot of the things on this map just kind of work i think laughter was pretty well set up the theme is pretty cool i like the uh the giant ferris wheel in the skybox that's uh that's something that really adds to the atmosphere of the map they have um slowed down like the carnival of carnage music playing in the background which is oddly aesthetic or not aesthetic atmospheric close enough uh, and yeah, there's also a mini game in your spawn where if you beat shooting gallery, you get a uh, crit pumpkin that allows you to counter the people spawn camping. The, the spawn camping is the biggest issue with laughter, I think. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to get behind enemy lines and uh, just run around near their spawn area and kill people as they're coming out. But uh, if that was a little bit harder to access, I think this would be a lot of fun. But th this still is really a lot of fun. I, I enjoy playing on laugh pretty much every time. It's still one of my favorite contracts to do just because like um, one of the things is uh, it, it's not like actual pumpkin bomb kills. It's balloon kills, but like the way they're set up actually makes you want to do it. And maybe it's just like the the primal enjoyment of popping a balloon and killing somebody. That sounds it sounds kind of wrong, but um, yeah, it's just it's fun. I'll put this in usually a great time. It's, it's pretty similar to Harvest. I'll put it above Harvest, though. I think I usually enjoy laughter more than uh, than playing on Harvest because there aren't as many sniper sight lines. Precipice is kind of painful, if we're being honest. I don't really know if the designer of this map quite knew what he was doing. Precipice is like an odd case because they, they made a lot of strange design decisions. Uh, the first, like, three quarters of the map are kind of painful but overall tolerable uh the fact that the payload goes next to the cliff means that like because okay it's very defensively oriented I'll, I'll put it that way if you're on defense you're gonna have a lot easier of a time than if you're on offense you really gotta try if you're on offense um but everything from spawn door placements to like the fact that the cart goes right beside the cliff and uber denial is super easy to the fact that sniper sight lines are insane on this map it all screams person didn't know what they were doing when they made this map, which is like, it's understandable. It's like, if it's your first one, again, I, I blame Valve for actually adding it to the game or like not having any kind of discretion in what they were doing. But yeah, Precipice for the first like three quarters of the map is all right, if you're on offense, at least uh, it's, it's just like, it kind of sucks. Now, once you get to the last point, literally, I don't think it is possible if the teams are anywhere close to balanced, even some points where the offense is so much better than the defense, uh, getting that last like couple of feet of cart capture is almost impossible. Like this is probably one of the most ridiculous final points I have ever seen on a map. The fact of the matter is that defense has so many places to stand. Like is so many that have like no counter. You literally have to go into the final room to be able to see like certain defensive positions, which makes it so snipers don't have insane sight lines on the final point, but it also makes it where you can put a sentry literally anywhere and you have to go within sentry range to be able to see the sentry, which like... That's not very good design. Every other map at least has a couple areas where you can shoot sentries outside of its range. That's like the balancing part of sentries is that they have like a limited range. And Precipice, Precipice Last literally makes it so sentries have the range of the entire room and uh, even things like uber pushes aren't guaranteed because they're pretty easy to uh, to deny. Really all you have to do is just worry about the ubers and you, you have the point in the bag. I think because of that, this is an extremely frustrating map to play. Um, it's a great point farm if you're on defense, don't get me wrong, but I just, I never look forward to playing this one. I'm going to put it in only play for contracts. Um, I'll put it, it's better than Monster Bash, and I would still say it's better than Brimstone. Uh, I would probably still rather play Ghost Fort than Precipice, so I'll put it right here. Blood Water is a map that is pretty polarizing for opposite reasons of it, things like Hell Tower are polarizing, where some people think just because it's bad water or it's like a bad water reskin that it should be immediately considered to be good. Other people realize that bosses spawn everywhere all the time. There's no escape from Merasmus, there's no escape from Monoculus. It's just pain all the time. You can't get you can't get away. Uh, by Merasmus, I mean the horseman. Merasmus doesn't actually spawn on this map, sorry. But yeah, the boss spam is a little bit crazy. Uh, the spell placements are a little weird. It's just like, 
it's bad water, but like wrong. Everything doesn't work as well because there's so many like random chaotic things interrupting what you're trying to do. It's very difficult to cap last because like you have to number one deal with monoculus that spawns when you get to the point of capping last. Uh, you have to deal with skeletons every once in a while. Uh, pumpkin bombs make it so it's a lot harder to like peek corners. The pumpkin bombs I think benefit the defenders a little bit more than the attackers. Just like this blood water is bad water in pure aesthetic and pure layout alone, but in spirit, it's a very different map. I still think it's relatively playable. It's much more playable than a lot of the only play for contract ones. I'll, I'll still have a lot more fun on this because, again, bad water takes a lot of discretion in what it's doing in terms of, like, uh, map layout, which carries this so much, but it's just... I'll put this in mixed bag, like, right at the bottom. I don't think uh, it really could go either mixed bag or only play for contracts, but... I, I have marginally more fun on Bloodwater than I do on Gravestone because at least on Bloodwater, it's kind of fun to attack versus Gravestone, which it's not. Asso Castle is Bloodwater's sister map because it is made off of another really, really well-received map in TF2, which is Upward. Asso Castle actually is sensible, though, and decides the only things it wants to summon are skeletons, which I still don't like, but it's not that often. And because Upward is a big enough map, it's pretty easy to run away from the skeletons when they do spawn. Um, generally speaking, Hassel Castle... Like, it has its problems, but again, Upward is fun. I, I, Upward is like a well enough designed map where you can get enough enjoyment out of this purely because it's a reskin of Upward. And yes, I know not everyone likes Upward. I personally do. This is my tier list, not yours. Go make your own if you disagree with me. Anyway, we're going to put this in usually a great time. This is like, I'll put it right at the bottom because it's like, it's it's only all right. But yeah, usually when I play on this, I do have a good time. That's just the fact of the matter. Megalo is a map for all intents and purposes. Should not be nearly as fun as it is, but it just is. Every time I play on Megalo, I have fun. Uh, usually I play Demo Knight on Megalo or Demo or I guess Hybrid Knight, which may, may affect my enjoyment of it a little bit. Uh, as long as you're on a server that doesn't have like a UGC Platinum tier sniper, this is fun. I think uh, having like a massive open map like this and a moving control point makes the gameplay pretty dynamic. Um, sentries aren't a huge problem. Real if sentries are a problem, don't try to spawn camp the enemy team. That's that's the advice I'll give you there. Snipers can be kind of annoying, but because they're only like one or two places that snipers can stand uh, in order to shut down like the entirety of mid, it's pretty easy to just like be careful of like, oh, if there is a sniper here, shoot a couple grenades in his direction. The uh, the angles that they have aren't huge, so if you if you shoot a couple grenades, they are forced to retreat. Generally, I think Megalo just works a whole lot better in practice than it does on paper, which is well, something very different than what you'd see normally, so I'm going to put this in usually a great time. I usually do enjoy my uh, my Megalo contracts. Uh, this is better than Hasso Castle, better than Harvest, and yeah, I, I think I enjoy Megalo more than Laughter. I'll put it right here. I think this is a good place for it. Mulder Grove is yet another map that has a pretty interesting gimmick mechanic. But outside of that, the map just kind of sucks. Like, not, not that it sucks, it's just that the map is kind of forgettable. The layout is okay. I kind of wish there weren't as many things that look down upon mid. Um, the 3v3 dueling system is really cool, and I'm glad they added it, because it's a lot of fun uh, to 3v3 duel people. <laughs> That's the only thing that I, like, really like about the map, though, is just dueling people 3v3, which is, like, okay, and that's not really what the map is supposed to be about all the time, but, uh, it, it's a fine enough map most of the time. I think, like, for whatever reason, again, this is something that I can't back up with any kind of evidence. It's just, like, I feel more games on here are completely unbalanced than on any other map, and, uh, if I thought about it for a long time, I could probably tell you why, just right now, that's where we're at. I'll put Mulder Grove in... Again, this is another one that could go either way between mixed bag and all right, but forgettable. Uh, overall, I just think this map, other than the dueling system, isn't interesting enough to me to like really warrant thinking about it. Which sounds like sounds kind of weird, but it's, it's true. Uh, I think Mulder Grove is probably one of the better ones in this tier. And actually, let me move Maple Ridge and Mulder Grove both above 
Gorge, because I just, I don't have a very fun time on Gorge, I'm telling you that. Words cannot describe the feeling that I have while playing Erebus. Generally, I assume that a Halloween map is added for the gameplay experience. Erebus makes me wonder if Valve doesn't have a second secret agenda that they're trying to push by adding uh, certain Halloween maps. Specifically, do Team Fortress 2 Halloween maps encourage death row patients to sit in the electric chair faster? Erebus is literally the worst map I have ever played on. I've played on Whatville, I have played on numerous community server maps made in like 10 minutes in Hammer by people who couldn't even figure out lighting. I've had more fun on those maps than I have on Erebus. Erebus somehow fails in a new way every single time you change stages. Stage 1 for Erebus is just complete defender spam hell. If the other team has Demo Man on it, and they just continue to hold M1 in a direction, they win. There's literally nothing you can do on A point of stage one because you just get blown up all the time. Point two is almost impossible to cap if the teams are anywhere close to balance. I have to throw that in because eventually you're gonna have like some random child like, well actually I capped it one time because all of our team was going heavy in medic and their team was dancing on the point so frick you. No, frick you Timmy Gonzales 2009, Arabish sucks. You wanna know why? It's because one single century can cover every possible entryway into the last point. W what kind of map does that? Freaking Dust Bowl. Th this is literally just the Halloween reskin of Dust Bowl, but it's like it doesn't even have the same charm as Dust Bowl because it just sucks. Point B is completely the opposite, where the amount of time it takes to run from point A to point B as an attacker is shorter than the amount of time it takes to respawn if you died while defending point A. Meaning that if you cap point A as an attacker, you have a complete guaranteed cap of point B with no resistance because people are still respawning, assuming people didn't just skip out on point A and immediately start building sentries on last, which generally isn't good strategy, but it's Erebus. Anything's a good strategy if it helps you not get steamrolled immediately. Point C is one of the most confusing map layouts I have ever seen. Uh, the entire thing is a labyrinth, including spawn, including freaking all of the other places that aren't spawn. This is probably- I, I can't express the amount of rage I feel when I play on Erebus. Guess what? It's an ICS map. I think I mentioned that, but just in case, he's the one to blame. And also Valve because they added it. Again, I'm not- I'm not about to go crapping on people's hobbies unless they make Erebus, in which case I think it's pretty fair game. It, it really- it's like self-defense at this point. Erebus has actively caused me harm. I'm just fighting back. Like... <laughs> Holy frick, this is- this is literally the worst map in the game. This is like- this is going in like the Erebus tier. I made Suffering literally just for this. This is just the worst thing ever. If you like Erebus, I'm sorry. Please see a doctor. Farmageddon is like the only good one from this year. No, it's one of the two good ones from this year. Um, it is a player destruction based game mode and uh, it's pretty comparable to Pit of Death, I think. There aren't as many flank routes, but like... All things considered, really, Farmageddon and Pit of Death are two sides of the same coin. Farmageddon's good, though. I'll put it in usually a great time. Um, I've not played this- okay, I'll admit I've not played this enough to give this, like, a full map review, other than saying this is a really cool-looking map. The skeletons running around are kind of annoying, I will give it that. That's, like, the only thing that I think this has is below Pit of Death, but, um, th this looks really cool. The fact that you're picking up Weed Eater is, like, it's cool that they're, like, constructing an entire theme around this. Um, I'll put this, like, I'll put it, uh, below Laughter and Megalo, because generally, from what I've played, I think I still would rather play on Laughter or Megalo. But this is, this is becoming one of my, uh, my top maps as of recently. Gravestone is, like, really weird, uh, because it's, it's the only, as of right now, it's the only official arena-style game mode we have in the entirety of TF2, and the fact that it's Halloween-restricted is even weirder. Um, it's kind of cool, though, because if you die, you don't just have to sit there looking at the screen. You become a little, like, plus ghost, and you can, like, fly around healing the teammates that are still alive and, uh, generally guaranteeing that, uh, you have an easier time winning the round, which is cool. I like that they added something for you to do if you died. I mean, like, it happens. You get sniped the second the round starts. Uh, but yeah, the fact that, like, you, they've kind of solved the biggest issue of Arena is impressive, actually, but I don't think that necessarily excuses the Arena-style gameplay 
entirely. It's not super fun to be a ghost. If you ignore that there's a higher chance that the heat death of the universe will occur before you get a contract done on this map, this is pretty fun. If you just play this for the sake of playing it, I think, uh, assuming, again, the teams have to be balanced for this to be fun. That's the downfall of arenas, that you really need team balance for it to be anywhere near enjoyable. But if it is, it's really fun. If not, it's just like, it's like, okay, I'll grind this out. I'll do some cheesy strategies to get my kills. But the contracts have, like, ruined my experience with this. I've had to go and play it, like, several times outside of like doing the contract to get a better sense of this because like at least then I know like oh I'm not getting like literally four points per life I'll put this in mixed bag I think this is probably one of the more fun ones that like can be bad so to speak I'll put this above everything but Carnival of Carnage. I, I, I like to do a little trolling, so we'll keep Carnival of Carnage up there at the top, personally. But I think Graveyard is uh, is, is one of the more, again, it's it's rising the ranks in terms of how much fun I have just the more that I play it. Los Muertos is really cool. Uh, it feels like an Overwatch map in Team Fortress 2 just because the assets are completely unique to this map. They, they designed up everything similar to uh, Curse Cove. They made everything from scratch, added it in here, and this map is beautiful looking like I'm not kidding this is probably like one of the best looking maps in the game um, that being said the gameplay is really fun if you enjoy scout soldier pyro demo man or spy if you don't play those classes and you main one of the other four this can be a little bit annoying just because this really does favor vertical mobility. Uh, Scout Soldier Demo and Pyro have really good tools for vertical mobility that I think take the most advantage of this map. And it's really weird too because if you're running through this, you can see areas that they specifically added that for scouts to access. Like areas that really shouldn't be able to like be anything uh, scouts can jump on and they've added specific ledges to ensure scouts can jump on them which is an interesting design choice but I like it I, I play in my fair share of scout on this map I think it's really fun this one from what I've seen on like reddit and everything this one kind of goes all over the place in terms of what people personally think of it I like this though every match that I've played on this bar like one or two were really fun uh, I think that like again the layout just like supports the style of gameplay I like to implement personally so i'll put it in usually a great time uh, i think this is um it's it's like a some it's kind of similar to harvest actually it's like harvest but snipers aren't as much of a problem and scouts and soldiers are more of a problem so it's really just whatever you want i'll put this uh, i'll put this right here though i think that's a good spot for it synthetic has uh strange decisions that they've made with this map first of all it has skeletons that chase you around immediate kill me uh second of all the spellbook placement is very very unique to say the least uh there are two spell books on mid uh which means that if you own mid you basically can defend mid for as long as you want because you can just farm for like fireball or whatever and immediately destroy people who are trying to attack you that holds this map back a lot because like it is entirely too easy to defend mid that and the lack of like flank routes and everything synthetic in general is just like it kind of blends in with all of the other halloween maps for me but um it really it's just because the layout is like it's nothing special uh the, the spell books kind of drag it down um the skeletons kind of drag it down and i think because of those it's like the fact that the the layout's pretty basic and i'm getting instant killed a lot is enough for me to like mentally blend this in with everything else but the theme of this is really cool i, I like they've like also tried to tell an entire story uh, with this map. It seems to be a common theme for uh, for this year's maps. I think it's kind of cool. So I'll put this in all right, but forgettable. Again, the least forgettable thing about this store or about the, uh, this map is the story. Um, I'll put this above Gorge, but below Motor Grove. I think that's a fine spot for it. And the last map is Terror, which is made by ICS, but also a lot of other people. So this one at least looks nice and not generic. Sorry, ICS. I don't mean to. I don't mean to roast this guy. I feel kind of bad, but at the same time, he made Erebus, so frick. Terror is very similar to like Gravestone, Hellstone, and freaking Brimstone. I, they should just rename this one the Terror Stone. <laughs> Because, like, at least then you can, like, uh, correctly mentally group it in with the other ones. There's a lot of things that randomly attack you. The map layout is, like, kind of interesting in some areas, but overall pretty generic and crampy. 
it's just whatever. I, I, this is like a pretty standard map, all things considered. I'll put this in only play for contracts. I played this a few times, similar to uh, the other ones this year. We'll see if uh, next year, like uh, doing the contract again and not having like the, the first time exposure to this changes my opinion next year, but this time around, it was just kind of like whatever. I, I felt exactly the same emotion playing this as I did all four of the other ICS maps. I'll put this one in only play for contracts. And there are so many maps in this tier that we need to decide where this goes. Uh, I would say it is probably better than Monster Bash and Brimstone and probably Precipice, but I think I would still rather play on Ghost Force. So we'll put it there. That's a, that's where it's going to be. So anyway, this is my personal Halloween map tier list, at least for 2021. I'll probably do something similar every single year. I made a similar uh, video to this in Halloween of last year, basically like giving a more objective ranking of the maps. But I realized, you know, fun is subjective. I might as well, like now that I am a little bit more established as a YouTuber, give my personal opinion. And because um, I know I'm going to get a decent amount of feedback on this, I would love to hear why you personally uh, either really dislike a map that I put high or really like a map that I put low. Because I think getting other perspectives, especially on like map enjoyment, is interesting. And there could be things that I entirely overlooked that, uh, that could be answered in the comments. So, again, I know opinions on the internet are generally frowned upon, but uh, sharing yours gives me a lot of joy so I, I love reading through the comments please put yours there and looking at this it's hilarious that this turned out to be symmetrical i actually didn't intend for that to happen so cool i guess it's just like art imitates life or something is this what life is this weird like shape that looks like you're like holding up the metal sign with your hand you're like you're doing that doing that type of thing but yes, this video was uh, relatively painful to make because I had to get background footage of me playing on literally every single map in the game and play on every single map in the game outside of that more so I could know how much I like them or not. Um, if you would be as kind as to like, uh, get this boy into the algorithm so it doesn't die in new and I don't waste like a hundred hours of my life again, that would be cool. So yeah, that's it. I'll probably do something similar to this next Halloween. Let me know what you want to see. And most importantly, have a good one.